Here are a couple of examples of calculating the um, normal stress within a beam uh, that's bending. So we've got a uh, overhanging beam here that's subjected to a distributed load and to a uh, concentrated force in the overhanging portion. And uh, in our first example, we're going to look at an, an I-beam that's made up of uh, one by six members. And so in an earlier video, we uh, calculated the moment of inertia of this cross section as 166 inches to the fourth. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, determine the bending moment. And to do that, we're going to draw the uh, bending moment diagram. So the first step in that is to find the reaction forces. I won't show the details of that here, but you can see we end up with a uh, reaction of 300 pounds on the left support and 900 pounds on the right support. And from that, uh, it's a good, a good uh, review of how to draw shear and bending moment diagrams. To draw the shear diagram, we start out working left to right, and the first thing we encounter is the 300 pound concentrated force, which is going to result in a step upwards of 300 pounds in our shear diagram. As we go from A to B, we'll see that the uh, 100 pound per foot distributed load downward is going to be the slope of our shear diagram. So we have a slope of minus 100 pounds per foot, and so over 8 uh, feet that's going to drop us a total of 800 pounds. So if we start at 300, subtract off 800, we're going to end up at minus 500 pounds at B. Now where that crosses the, the axis, of course, we start at 300 and going down at a slope of minus 100, just 300 divided by 100. So three feet would be the distance uh, from A to uh, where the shear becomes zero. And then the rest of the five feet uh, is from that point out to B. When we get to B, we have the 900 pound concentrated force upward. So starting at minus 500, we go up 900 to 400. There's no distributed load uh, from B on to the end, so that'll just be a, a, a flat uh, part of the uh, shear diagram. And finally, at the end, 400 pounds down brings us back to zero. So we'll start at zero and end at zero. To draw the moment diagram, we look at the areas underneath the uh, shear diagram. So in this first triangular area here, one half base times height, that gives us an area of 450 foot pounds. And since there are no concentrated or external moments here, everything that we need is available on the shear diagram. We'll start at zero and we'll go up 450 to get to uh, the moment value at the point where the shear is equal to zero. And uh, the shape of that, uh, we know that the uh, uh, slope of the moment diagram is equal to the value of the shear. So where the uh, value of the shear is zero, that's going to have a slope of zero. So you can see we, uh, we start out at a positive slope and work our way up to having a slope of zero. The next region, next triangular region, is all below the, uh, uh, the axis, and so the area is negative with a value of 1,250 foot-pounds. So we subtract that off of 450, that takes us down to a moment value of minus 800 um, foot-pounds at uh, point B. And again, we can look at the slope and say that we start with a slope of zero. The slope's negative the whole way and becomes steeper as we go. And then finally, we have the last region, which is 800 foot-pounds, which added to the minus 800, brings us back to zero at a, uh, at a constant slope. So once again, start at zero and end at zero. So there's our moment diagram. Now, we have a symmetric cross section. And what that means, of course, is that we're going to have tension and compression that are equal magnitudes at any location. So in that, uh, in that context, we don't really care too much about whether the moment is positive or negative. Uh, we just want to take the moment with the extreme stress of value, uh, excuse me, with the um, highest magnitude to be able to find the extreme stresses. And we use the equation uh, plus or minus mc over i to calculate the values of the stresses. So in our case, we're going to use the moment of 800 foot-pounds as the maximum magnitude. We'll go ahead and convert that to inch-pounds since everything else is in inches. Our c value is the distance from the neutral axis to either the top or the bottom surface, the extreme uh, uh, distance away, which again, because it's symmetric, is going to be the same for uh, top or the bottom, so that's uh, half of the overall height, or 4 inches. 
we know the value of the moment of inertia, and so we plug in here and come up with a value of 231 psi. Now in this case, because of the fact that the moment uh, is negative at the point where it's 800 uh, uh, foot-pounds, that means we're going to have tension at the top and compression at the bottom, but again equal magnitude of that. So if we're looking at uh, failure criteria, uh, the 231 psi would be the, uh, the extreme stress that we're looking at. Now let's look at that same uh, beam but now we're going to change the cross section such that uh, well we've really taken the, the bottom flange off of that so instead of an I-beam we have a T-beam which is non-symmetric and again in our earlier video on uh, moments of inertia we calculated these values we located the neutral axis as 4.75 inches uh, above the bottom of the beam and we found the, the uh, moment of inertia about that neutral axis is 55 and a quarter inches to the fourth. Now, if we have equal strengths in tension and compression, then uh, we know that if we're trying to find simply the maximum magnitude of the normal stress, then I simply go just like we did in the last example and would only look at the point where the moment is maximum. But a lot of brittle materials, uh, even, even wood, uh, are going to have different strengths in tension and compression. So in that case, you do want to consider the sign of the bending moment and we want to use instead of the mc over i we want to use the more general formula minus my over i where y is the distance away from the neutral axis at any particular point so as we recall there's what our moment diagram looks like and at the top of the beam we're positive 2.25 inches away from the neutral axis at the bottom of the beam we're 4.75 inches below the neutral axis so a y value of negative at the bottom and positive at the top. So let's take a look at the uh, point where the moment is the greatest positive value and that's at 450 foot-pounds which uh, multiply that by 12 to get 5400 inch-pounds. At the top again where y is positive 2.25 we're going to come up with a compressive stress of 220 psi. At the bottom with y equals minus 4.75 the negative signs cancel out and we end up with a tensile stress of 464 psi at the bottom. Now if we look at the uh, point where the moment is negative 800 foot-pounds and we look at the top, uh, again the minus signs cancel out here and so we end up with a tensile stress of 391 psi but notice that's lower than the value we got at the lower, value, lower magnitude of moment but at the bottom, because again the um, uh, uh, distance away from the neutral axis is so much greater, we ended up with a tensile stress of 464 psi here, and less than that where the moment is greater. But of course, where the uh, at the bottom we're going to get the worst case stress, and um, again with three negative signs there, it's going to come out to be a uh, compressive stress of 825 psi. So our results here, the maximum tensile stress is 464 and the maximum compression stress is 825 psi. Both of those occurred at the bottom of the beam but they occur at different locations along the length of the beam. So in summary, when you have a symmetric cross section you can simply pick off the moment that has the maximum magnitude and use MC over I to calculate both the maximum tension and the maximum compressive stress. When you have a non-symmetric cross-section, use the general formula sigma equals minus my over i and check at the top and the bottom. If you have a moment diagram such as we had where you have both positive bending and negative bending, uh, well then the safest method is to check both the maximum moment and the minimum moment and check at the top and the bottom of the section to make sure that you're getting both the maximum tension and the maximum uh, compression within the beam.